What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna to be covering the eight most essential things you need to do on your Amazon list. talk about eight things that we can focus on on each listing to make it uh, sell better and rank better on the platform. The first one we're going to start with is the title. Every category that you're selling in on Amazon um, has different specs or technical requirements that are needed on the platform. So for instance what I mean by that is you could be selling in the food category and uh, your title link needs to be 50 characters. You could be selling in supplements and it can be 80. Uh, there's even other categories you can have up to 120 characters. So it's important to know your character length for the title that you're going to use. Consultants will go back and forth on uh, is the title more important or the bullet points or the description as far as SEO ranking. And honestly, the truth is we don't really know. I know a lot of companies put out data, but unless we have the back end of Amazon, we can't be sure that there's a uh, weight on one or the other. I firmly believe that the title is really important to keyword ranking and whenever we're optimizing listings for our clients, we're trying to take our most valuable keywords and make sure that they're in the title. The bullet points follow right after this and that's gonna be number two on our list. And the bullet points are the, it will say about the product on your Amazon page and there's usually about five um, bullet points that you can use on any listing. So this is like, this is something to really think about is when you're on Amazon and you're searching, it's different than the web. On the web, you're searching, how do I tie my shoes? Or how do I make a knot? Or uh, how do I get my drone to fly? Questions that are informational. On Amazon, customers are already ready to buy oftentimes, and they're searching directly for what they want. Blue and white sneakers. Um, so think about this whenever you're doing your research and you're probably going to use a tool as well to tell you which keywords are valuable, but we're not going to talk about that today. So let's just think about those keywords that we want in our bullet points, have sales copy that makes sense. Um, so it's not just a whole string of keywords, but be intentional about where you're getting those keywords to rank within your bullet points. Every now and then, if you're using vendor central or seller central, you might get more than these five bullet points, a uh, sixth, a seventh, or even an eighth bullet point. And these are coming in on specific items that are on Amazon retail, for, for instance, that are in these other attributes. And it can be hard to tell exactly when those are going to come through. But be sure to look at your listing and if you see a random word coming through, like uh, maybe made in USA or uh, the type of material it's made out of is showing up as a sixth or seventh bullet point, make sure that that's on brand with the rest of your copy so it doesn't just stick out and look strange. The description area is another area that a lot of vendors and brands are not taking full advantage of. Uh, we can have up to 2,000 characters in this area, and you can also use some simple HTML to separate the copy from each other and make it easier to read. Include keywords here as well that you have in the bullet points and in the title, and in a perfect world you'd have the keywords that you really care about to be in all three areas. The description can sometimes be replaced by enhanced brand content page for people that have brand registry. Best practices is to still include the description um, for ranking on Google, even if there's an EBC page there, which are those beautiful infographic pages you can get uh, with EBC, but it will still rank on Google, and so you wanna have the description there to help you rank better. Search terms, we've referred to in the title, the bullet points in the description, but there's another area called search terms uh, in the back tab whenever you're editing the listing. It, it ranges how many keywords and characters you can have here, so make sure you know based on the category you're in or, or when you're watching this video what's relevant at this time. But the search terms are ways that you can use misspellings, competitor words, any type of keywords that are relevant to your product that you wouldn't include in the copy. So this stuff is really just like, you know, straightforward, basic optimizations on Amazon listings. Uh, this is the boring stuff, but this is really the stuff that uh, makes a big difference and can result in a lot of money. Um, I have clients that have, have paid attention to these areas with great photography, great copy, intentional keywords that are absolutely killing it on Amazon. Um, we're tracking our keywords, we're uh, seeing what's changed over a week or two weeks time. Are we ranking higher on those keywords or lower? Or which keywords should we take from advertising and plug them in? Uh, it's data analysis over and over and over and over again. 
But it's really that kind of attention to, to these areas that'll pay off. And I have story after story after story of us working on clients uh, in these areas that we're trying to improve and get crazy amount of results. The fifth thing on our list is images. And I cannot stress how important this is. And it's one of the hardest conversations I have with brands to really get them to invest in photography or great imagery. Um, the best listings on Amazon have pictures that really stand out. They're HD, maybe they've got infographic, lifestyle images, um, lifestyle images meaning like pictures of your product out there in the real world. Um, these are things that you can easily get help with by reaching out to a photographer that has e-commerce experience um, or looking even at a competitor's products that, that's doing a good job. Um, if, if someone in your space doesn't have good photography or imagery, um, look outside your space and find some people that are doing it well. The first things that people see whenever they're searching on Amazon is the photography and it is the first thing that stands out to them uh, and it can make or break a listing. I know that simply by uh, improving some of the photos or adding copy on top of the photos that talks about the value of the products, we've seen crazy amount of conversion rate uh, increases on products that we're doing photography well. So this is a lot of the areas that we improve right out the bat whenever we start working with the client. So we're moving quickly and we've covered a lot of ground. but. All of these are very important. We have a few more to cover. The next one I wanna cover is what category are you in? So whenever you're selling a product, you have to choose a category on Amazon that you think your product best fits. But this can actually require a little bit of interpretation as there's many categories that might fit your product and not just one. Look at competitors, look at a category that you think you can have the most impact on. Um, ranking higher in one category, even if it's not as specific as another, might be better for your product than just being in, in the exact category that fits your spot. So I know that's broad and open for interpretation, um, but just make sure your product is in a category that makes sense. Uh, look at competitors and see if they're in a category that's not exactly like your product. There might be some room for growth there. I know that um, even in my experience, you know, I've had products that are maybe ranked number 10 in one category and we can switch categories. Um, and get spot one or two, which can result in a lot of sales or the best seller badge simply by moving categories. So that's something really important to notice. Um, and you can find that at the top of your page. Um, if you don't know where to look, I'll show it on the screen here and you can see exactly what category your product is in. Price is another area, number seven on our list. And price is important because while you have to know the price that you need to be at for your product, um, you also need to know where everybody else is in comparison to you. People that are selling similar products, uh, competitors, know your landscape, know your price point, know where your profitability line is and make adjustments accordingly. One of the best things about Amazon is that you can adjust on the fly. It can be dynamic pricing and we're not set anywhere. Um, just make sure to make small adjustments and don't make any drastic moves. Um, you want to stay within 10 to 15% of the price you're at each time that you move. The last on our list is our fulfillment method. And what that is, is there's, there's multiple ways to fulfill on Amazon. You can fulfill it yourself, uh, meaning an order comes through and you ship it out of your warehouse. Uh, and you can charge shipping or not charge shipping. Uh, you can send your items into Amazon, which is fulfillment by Amazon, where you pack up your items per their specs and send it to them, and then they fulfill the items. Uh, you can be seller fulfilled prime, which means you're prime eligible, but shipping it yourself. Um, you can sell completely through Amazon, which is vendor central. We've covered that in another video. Lots of options here, but really you want to try, uh, if you can, within your products, budgets and constraints to get your items into prime. Uh, whatever that means for your brand. There's a big difference between items that are in prime and prime eligible and items that are not. A lot of times when someone first starts their search, um, you know, they might search, there's 10,000 results and the first thing they're going to click on their phone or their computer is, well, just show me the prime only option because I'm paying prime. I want it in two days. I want it no hassle. I don't want to pay extra shipping. And if you're not prime and that, that seller, I mean, that buyer does that, you're immediately out of the running and they'll never find your product. So make sure that FBA isn't an option for you if you're not using it now. I know a lot of sellers that I work with think that they can't do FBA until we really break down the numbers and see that it can work for them too. We covered a lot, but I really just want you to know what exactly you should be focusing on on Amazon when you're looking to optimize your listing. Hopefully this gives you guys a little insight on where to focus your attention uh, to get the most improvement out of your listings. We covered the eight most essential things you need to do to optimize your listing. If you have any questions about these, please comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.